November 8th, 2016. Who would have ever thought that someone like Donald Trump would win the old presidency and the election there? Crazy. Crazy. But, like I mentioned before on my uh, Facebook page, you know, I told people, shouldn't be surprised. Think about this. Think about it. The man came down his elevator into his lobby and gave a speech, throwing his hat in the ring to run for the presidency. And at, at his uh, announcement at the primary, at, at his lobby, something stuck out to me because he talked about me personally. You know, he, he talked about me, you know, for my family members, you know, and things like that. He said something about me. And he said immigrants were rapists, drug dealers, and murderers. Now, I understand that that happened over a year ago. I understand that. The reason why I bring that up is because when he started his, his campaign that way and ran it on the basis of hatred, bigotry, racism, uh, you call it, whatever it was he, he used and was able to win the primary and become the nominee of the Republican Party, you had to have known, had to have known that he was going to win the election. I knew it. You know, I told people around me, they didn't believe it, they thought I was crazy. Now, I didn't predict it, but when you've got people who elect someone like that to represent their party, it's either one, they didn't care, they ignored it, or they, they share the same views as Donald Trump. They just never said it. And finally, they've got someone to say what they believed in and was able to put it out there on the national stage in front of the camera for, for millions of Americans and the world, and the world to see that. That is amazing, shocking to say the least. Where do we pick up the pieces? Now, why I said that, it, 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 I took it personally. Let me explain something to you. I'm an immigrant. You know, my mom brought me here at a very young age from Mexico. And it wasn't the right way she did it, but she did it. But her having the tenacity and the fortitude and the drive to make sure I got my my paperwork, my, my green card and stuff. She did it when I was very young, uh, before I started school. And so I went to school, learned English, and uh, and so fast forward to today, you know, or let me let me back up a little bit, uh, you know. And and I also served in the military. Now, mind you, I'm an immigrant. I am not a citizen of this country, of this great, awesome country that that can give you so many opportunities. Whether you take advantage of them or not, it's beside the point. Whether you go live a simple life, you go to work, you come home, and you bother nobody else, it's just it's as pleasing as if you went and became a, a multi-millionaire. Everybody has different dreams, their different interpretation of the American dream. And I serve this country proudly. And that's what's shocking to me because I've had people come to me and, and would come to me and try to speak Spanish. Now we're talking American white people, okay? Would come to me and start speaking Spanish and when I, I respond in English, they say to me, oh, you speak English actually? Finally. Or when we're doing a job at a client's house and he says out loud, why am I in charge? Because I had a, a helper with me. He was white and I was Mexican. Why was I in charge and not the other guy? And that pretty soon there will be no jobs for white Americans. For white people, basically, is what he said. Or I'm putting a bid proposal together. They call me up and they said up front that um, they don't give jobs to, to Mexicans. They only give them to white people. I guess being that my name does not sound Mexican, they felt they thought that they were talking to a white American. And when I went to go meet them to give them the proposal, 
they were they were upset to say the least. I mean, the anger was there. They said I mis I misled them, I deceived them, and and when I tried to get they, I knew what they were getting at, but I tried to get an answer from them, and they just told me, they just closed the door and. I left. So I I felt that hatred, and here's this, here, here's the crazy part. Here, here's the crazy part. Though I think I may have been faced with that type of, of racism growing up, I never paid no mind to it. I never took I never took it in as racism. I just brushed it off. Never thought nothing of it. A lot of this didn't start until after President Obama was elected in his first term. That's when we had the market crash in 08. And you know you had Wall Street that created the crash, but yet the message thrown out there to the American people as we were trying to get job to trying to stop the bleeding of the unemployment and, and the layoffs and things like that. And when jobs were slowly, slowly trying to come back, um, and they, they get stimulus packages, they started blaming Mexicans for why white people were not getting jobs because we were cheap labor and that's why I take that personally I do um, you know I, I brushed it off I, I think I share a responsibility of why Donald Trump got elected um, because I cannot vote is what I'm trying to get at because I'm only an immigrant I, I'm, I'm a um, that's it, I'm not a citizen. And so, here it is Thursday. The election was held on Tuesday. It's November 10th. And by the way, happy birthday, Marine Corps. Happy birthday, Devil Dogs. That was the branch of service I served in. So I'm a proud veteran, a proud Marine. Devil Dog, hurrah to all my fellow Marines out there. In the past and the present, and for the future Devil Dogs that will be born. Back on point, uh, we've had protests in cities across the country. People are saying he is not their president. Um, it's it's chaos. Everyone's angry, and and um, people elect, those that elected him ignored his message, or not. I'm saying ignored his message. Um, were okay with his message, but they ignored or agreed is beside the point. They were okay with his message, and now. We are divided. We are not. We are not together as a nation. How long it's going to take for us to get back together? Who knows? We'll see what happens. But you know, here's the crazy part. This man's got a trial coming up. I think in December for a fraud for a Trump University that he uh, frauded many students out of thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to try to show them how to become real estate moguls like himself. So he's going to trial for fraud. Um, I think they said there was a trial for him for an alleged raping of a of a uh, 13 year old or something like back in the 90s or something. Um, yet he was still elected. Now they didn't talk about these allegations much on on the national stage. Um, they did, but not much. Again, a lot ignored it. So two days later, people are creating. Um, a to-do list. We got, of course, we've got midterms coming up in two years. And so here's my pledge. I failed. I failed because I did not do my part of being a citizen. So here's what I'm going to do. Here is my pledge, not only to, to the American people, but to my fellow immigrants. I will stand for them, and I'm going to stand with them. I will not let my fellow immigrants be harassed, intimidated, I will stand up for them because I'm able to do that. I've been given that ability uh, because I live in this free country and I fought for this country and I, and I know I have those same rights in so many ways. So I am going to make a pledge that I am going to apply for my citizenship. Not only for my immigrants, for this country, for the boating, but for my wife. Who's been asking me, been on me about it for years and years and years. 
I am going to apply for my citizenship. So, um, and I'm hoping I can do it in secrecy a little bit to, to, to surprise her, but if not, that's fine too. Um, that is my, my goal. Now, people ask me, well, why? You know, I, I, I'm, um, I'm 44, and um, I've been here since I was about two years old. People ask me, why have I not been a citizen of this country? I've known why, but um, I've always brushed it off as I don't know. I felt like, what do I care? I mean, I still get a lot of the benefits as everybody else. In, in so many ways, granted, immigrants are still limited on certain, a lot of things, but for the most part... Um, and finally, you know, the other day someone asked me, and I finally came out. Some people know, not everybody, very, very few people, but those that are still close to me that know me all my life asked me, why am I not a citizen? And I finally broke down and I told them, because I'm not welcomed. I'm not welcomed here because of the skin of my color and my origin, because I'm a Mexican, I'm an immigrant. Now, mind you, this feeling been around, but it was reinforced after the president was elected in his first term, President Obama. And a lot of white Americans made it known. You saw, you see it on Facebook, you see it in social media, you see it in memes, the derogatory things. You, you, you see it. We see it now. But I thought that that was a selfish reason. Not only for me, but for the ones that make that, my loved ones, for my mom who brought me here to give me a better life for many Americans and for this democracy and that's why I felt that now is the time to change that ideology that thought process and go for my citizenship so I will be recording my process and placing it on YouTube for people to watch this and see where this goes I appreciate it and thanks for uh, for near.